Hey, Dad. I like the lady who says recording in progress. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing? Yeah. Good. I'm good. I'm great. Yeah. How was, how was your week? Ah, well, um, it was, a, I had a long work week. I only got out, I came out this morning, actually. Yeah. I got Victoria off to Uzbekistan. Right. She got there, took a long time. Fine. Uh, it's she's a Christian. It seems to be You're fading in and out a little bit. I I don't know. Wait. Uh, is that better? Yeah. 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 I had my volume on. Really. So she said she's in Tashkent, which is a beautiful, clean city. Uh, they don't see Americans. Can you hear me? I, again, it's yes, I can hear you right now. But then for a moment, it did fade out again. I don't know what it is, but um, I can I can hear you pretty well. But there's a kind of a buzzy sound. Okay. Oh, well, that might. Be okay. Yeah. Um, so what's up? Um, it was also a busy week, not, it doesn't sound like it's busy for me as it was for you, but it was also a busy week, both at work and just outside, you know, a, a friend is leaving to go do an, uh, for have another opportunity, so they had an after work event, um, uh, yeah, it just felt like a busy week, and then I didn't end up going to the protest yesterday, I was just too tired, so. What was it, what was it for? It was reproductive rights, it was, you know, fighting for women's rights, uh, and, and, and people who, who, who write, write to make choice, um, with yeah. their bodies. Um, but yeah, no, and I, no, I, I wanted to go, at the same time, I just ended up spending, you know, spending the day in bed, watching TV, cuddling with the dogs, and that, sometimes you need that too, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of, that's going to be my, that's going to be my, my evening. Yeah. And then are you, but then are you back to work tomorrow? Are you back to the well, city tomorrow? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to work at home in the morning. Oh, okay. And if it's not, if I don't have, I don't have any meeting scheduled. On Zoom, right. So I'll drive in, in the afternoon and then go to work on Tuesday. So yeah. that. Yeah, it's getting busy because the auctions are coming up. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, generally, it, it's it's okay. I mean, it, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, I found because because we're going to have to move out of the loft uh, for the renovation. Right. I found that Airbnb on Lexington and 88th Street. I I, I mean, I, I won't know what it looks like until mm -hmm. I move in. No, but um, it, it should be okay. It's a one bedroom. It'll be fine for me just to going into the city. And when when does that start and how long is that going on for? Well, they, they we want them to start in July. Yeah. And they say six to seven months. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, eight months. Yeah. So right. 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 No, right. I have the I have the apartment until the end of January. So, mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I hope to spend a lot of time in East Hampton, but if I'm going into work, of course, yeah. At least it's, a, it's not a it's not a long walk. Right. No, that's good. Yeah. No, that sounds perfect. Neighborhood, but it's it's convenient. So. And then, but that okay. So, but well, Victoria will work from East Hampton. I was like, because Victoria she, works. She she will only come in. She'll go into the city to check on the work. Probably she right. doesn't. Normally, she doesn't go into the city unless she has to see a doctor or something. Sure. Oh, okay. But then, what did what's she gonna do with all her her quilting stuff that's in the city? Or does she do, will she be okay without it? Well, no. She she moved everything. Okay. Out to East Hampton. Okay. She had a shop which she closed. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. And her assistant Kim, who lives in. Um, St. Louis yes. has a, a lot of the stuff. Oh, that's right. Okay. It is like um, 
a what do you call well she worked i mean she's victoria's right hand but she's also for they, they both do fulfillment sure yes yeah yeah, yeah. no yeah so so the business stuff is all online now and 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 um and that comes from me so she she does have studio space in the loft and that will probably be yeah that that will stay but if part one room there will be her studio for, for working there um, when you said fulfillment, that reminded me. So, if you order things from bands off of Bandcamp, oftentimes the like the records of the 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 material itself will be sent directly from the record label, but then the band will separately send you like if you ordered stickers or what have you. So you end up getting like when yeah you get you get your order fulfilled by, by more than one. Um, person, but I got so I always forget though that Sub Pop Records, which is located here in Seattle, Mark Arm, who is from the band Mud Honey, still works there in the warehouse department. So when you get a package from Sub Pop, it says Mark Mark Arm, and I think why is the guy from Sub from Mud Honey? And it's, yeah, it's just because he's you know that's what he's done for the last. He still they still play they still do shows but. That's his day job. His day job's been working at the record label for yeah, twenty yeah. years or so. <laughs> my uh, my high school reunion. It's Brooklyn yeah. cl class of nineteen ninety two. It's the thirtieth anniversary for my reunion. They just uh, they had some. <laughs> I know they had some uh, event yesterday, and so people posted pics, and I got to see lots of pictures of you know people. I haven't seen in a long time. I think I told you, you know, Mel says hi, Lauren says hi, Matt, all those people say hi. Uh, I didn't know Mel is running a yarn shop in, in I think, uh, Lancaster. I'm not sure where she is now, but she's, yeah, yeah. and she's, she's a yarn shop, which of all things, you know, I mean, me with all my knitting and all, it's just funny. The world is, yeah, 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 yeah. None of us went too far. None of us. <laughs> I posted, I didn't even realize it was this big Brooklyn Tech weekend, but I posted this cover of me doing a song, but of course, I still have green hair like I did in high school, so all these like high school people who probably normally wouldn't comment, but it happened to pop up in their feed, you know, saying, oh my gosh, you haven't changed at all, which, I mean, I, I none of us have, I like looking at the pictures, yeah. none of us really, you know, I mean, we're... They're not all fat and bald. No. Well, I mean, we are and we aren't and we're not, but we're all, I don't know. I feel like the essence of who we are, it's, a, yeah, no, I feel like, yes, I mean, we're, yeah, no, some people are bearded and some people, yeah, no, we're all, we've all, but yeah, it's just interesting. It's, it's neat. It's, I, so yeah, I've been participating. That's nice. Um, some people tried to get me to go in person and I don't. I, I, that that kind of thing gives me anxiety, but you know, to to like the photos online and to yeah, yeah. I, interact I with people. That. Yeah, no, I um, I uh, I'm I'm still uh, I'm still a, I'm still afraid of crowds. Um, mm. Well, I shouldn't say it that that bluntly, but um, well, I can I can do it, but it takes a lot out of me. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, do you, do you, have you, do you, like, have you been part of the sort of the, the cultural discussion around introverts and extrovert? Do you consider yourself one or the other? Oh, um, well, that's very interesting. I, I wasn't, I wasn't aware of that, but, but I, I self-described as, as a teenager or even as a, I, I self-describe my to my mother as an introverted extrovert. For yourself or for yes, yes I self-described as an introverted extrovert when I learned what those words meant. Yes. And I was and a teenager, a young teenager. Yes. Yeah. I thought of myself as a because I I did I did thing I I could get up in class and I like to act. Yes, but I also thought a lot. <laughs> but you no okay, but you're you're more okay. Well, here's the okay. I think a lot of people like you 
sort of identify as both or a bits and pieces of either. The sort of the, the, the conversation that I've been hearing in the last couple of years is really more around not even so much do, what do you enjoy, but what what do you get energy from? Some people can spend time with a group of people, enjoy themselves, but then they need to go home and recharge. That's me. I need my alone time afterwards. Other people, they actually draw their energy from being in a crowd. When they go home, that feels depleting and sapping. They need to be around people sort of almost constantly. And that's more an, a true extrovert. And then I consider this, and this is me, you know, obviously being a YouTuber and whatnot. I, to me, that's very, very different. And I, I, I think and, and, and process out loud a lot with the people that I supervise because trainings and things are part of our job. And I definitely... When and none of them like you know when you know Zoom meetings and things, I'm constantly having to prod them. You know, please keep your camera on. I know it's uh, blah blah blah. Um, but the way I sort of explain it is, I'm an introvert. I absolutely at the end, of, you know, this whole pandemic, I've been perfectly fine. Like I don't need to be around other people, but I am a performer, or that's an aspect of who I am, or a hat that I can turn on, and that's not depleting in the same way. And I can do that in person or over Zoom or whatever. I can be in front of an audience of a hundred people. But that's very different from having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And there are very few people, actually, like other than you, that I can really have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I cannot stand small talk at all. So I can't, I, you know, parties, getting to know people or meet people is hard because I, I you know, I... I have to know someone deep enough to have those deeper... You know, we, you and I talk about race and gender and, and politics, you know, but I, how do you get to that place with a new person? I don't know. I, well, that... I, I identify with that, Bob, because I, uh, if I have, if I'm in a, if I'm in a big social situation where I'm, l let's say it's an opening mm -hmm. and I'm going to be with people, some of whom I don't know and who don't know me, some mm -hmm. of them know me and I don't know them. Right. And some of them, so I I will I will do it. I will be aware that it is not that easy. Yes. And I'll be exhausted when I get home and I will definitely need to recharge. Sure. If I have to go if I have to give a talk or a lecture, mm -hmm. even if then there's an exchange, people ask me questions. Sure. Sure, sure. I go home. I'm pleasantly tired, but I'm not. I'm not mentally right. I'm. I'm fine. I'm yeah. fine. But, um, but I. I definitely need. If I would say, <laughs> well, if it's with people I totally know and feel comfortable with in a relatively small group, that's fine because I don't. Sure. Have, I don't have to be on. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. If I have to be on, but it's professional, then that's okay too, because yep. I know how to do that. Yeah. But if, I, if it's a big social situation or, or just a, I don't, I mean, I don't go to cocktail parties or anything. Yeah. That kind of thing, it's really, it's, it's hard work. And I, 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 I don't look for, I dread it. And, and I, I'm so relieved when it's over. I'm really mm -hmm. happy. So, yeah. So, uh -huh. um, but I'm fine by myself. I'm fine by myself. And, and, as I'm comparing both, you know, I, part of it is the predictability. If you're giving a talk or what have you, you have, uh, even if it's somewhat spontaneous or even like you said, it's a Q&A where you may not anticipate, you still have a framework or a structure. Whereas when I go to a party, there are so many, un who knows what people are going to talk about or ask, I don't know. I think something about the unknownness and the, the openness of it that that is intimidating to me. Um, my mind has to process all these sort of variables. Um, yeah, no, I don't know. It's an interesting discussion. I, I yeah, I, I am fascinated by. Oftentimes, people who identify uh, one way or another may not be what you expect. People often expect me to be an extrovert because I do. I am on a lot of the time. Um, yeah. There's even a Geico ad where the woman says, I'm an introvert. It's very rare. And then the, the little Geico, I don't know if that's true. Like, I don't, I, don't, I mean, it's, an introvert's actually fairly, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, Pink Floyd. Oh, I know. I'm just now moving on now. Or Pink Pink Floyd. Did you hear about this? No. First new song in 28 years. Okay. And it's a it's a Ukrainian folk song. They took this clip that they saw. David Gilmore saw this clip of a Ukrainian. He's in full like soldier gear, but he's in the street of Kiev, and it's like silent because of you know and. Yeah. His voice is just belting out this like folk song, so they set it to Pink Floyd. They he they they assembled not Roger Waters obviously, but they assembled the Pink Floyd guys, and it's their first new song. Cause I okay now if you follow Pink Floyd, you thought didn't they come out with the album 2014 or something like that? They did, but it was material from the Division Bell, so they literally haven't recorded new. They've toured, they've played music, but they haven't recorded new music in. 28 since 1994 or so so this is and well, it's what Pink Floyd thing to do yes it? yes and for it to be about you know war and peace and and yeah, yeah and they recorded it in you know they the his is it on YouTube? it's on YouTube um they I guess he he has a studio in his barn David Gilmore I guess his daughter-in-law is ukrainian she sort of designed the set for this video hello say hello oh, 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 oh that face <laughs> duke just looked up did i was that my oh i see a dog face yes that was that's the, he hurt yeah he <laughs> all right all right okay okay okay, okay. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna find that I'm gonna find that right away. I I have a I have a ticket to Roger Waters. I I, I can't use. Uh. I'll be in. I mean, if 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 the if I go to Korea, I can't I can't use. Right, it. right, right. right. Because it's. Where is it? Where is it? Where is he playing? It's in Madison Square Garden. I mean, I the ticket. Yeah. I, I bought it three years ago. Yeah. 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 Changed, you yeah, know? right, 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 right. I and I can't, and because he's only there two nights, it's not like I could, unless I find out he's somewhere else, I can get to maybe because of the rescheduling, you might be able to get a refund. But I mean, it's I, I haven't looked into that. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm waiting until it's absolute, until I absolutely know that I'm going to Korea, right? So, because if, if I'm not, I want to go, so you know. sure. Even though not Pink Floyd, but you know. Oh well, no, I would see I would well, I would see Roger Waters over Pink Floyd, but that's me personally. I, you know, yeah, no, I think that well, that's us. That's I don't know. I like his solo material as well. I like and I no, and I like Pink Floyd too. I you know I like all of it, but I I think. Well, again, though, Pink Floyd is touring on 30-year-old material. Roger Waters is still putting out. I, 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 that just seems more interesting to me. That I, you know, yeah. I'd be curious what yeah. his, and his live show evolves over time. Whereas they tend to play sort of, I mean, they the same set. They close with another Brick of the Wall Part Two. They, I don't know. It's just, you know, I don't know. I've seen clips of both. I would rather, yeah, I would rather see, rather I see Roger Pink Waters. Floyd is covering themselves, right? I mean, essentially, yeah. I mean, I mean. See, that is true of many legacy bands, and then you have sort of the 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 children and 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 whatnot playing the instruments as people retire. And uh, I think that's very interesting. I think it's great. No, I think if you know, the band that is completely composed of the children. I mean, I think that's uh, at least better than when you show you know the, the what they used to do, which is. I and mean, what they did a lot, and especially Motown almost basically destroyed their own reputation. They owned the name, and they would just get four new guys and send them out as the Four Tops or the Temptations or whatever, and send them to state fairs. And so you would think, wow, I'm seeing I'm seeing the Four Tops for for fifteen dollars. That's amazing. And then it's you know it's three you know. <laughs> We're seeing a Four Top. A Four Top. Yes. Um, so no, I, I will definitely take the the children or the siblings or the, you know, I mean Sean Lennon is touring with the Ono oh Elephant Memory Band. He's the band leader of it now, and that's great. That's oh, that's interesting. And I guess I guess uh, Ringo's son is is 
Yeah. Sure. And, uh, well, not to play favoritism, I'll mention Julian has new material out as well. Uh, I, I can't say I've heard it, but it's I, it, I, I do know that. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, uh, I, heard, I was listening to the classic vinyl driving in, and there was yeah. Greg Nass talking about Woodstock, mm -hmm. saying, saying how how long ago it was <laughs> right and how scared they were because they they'd never it was only the second time they'd ever played live yeah and and they would it was like a huge deal for them because they were barely they were barely together and nobody knew who they were you know um it, it's interesting because it, it's that you know they, they it's such a it's now historically it's like so embedded. It's so embedded into woods, into the myth or the legend and the sound of Woodstock that it's it, it's amazing to think that they were these four guys really nervous to go on stage. Oh, for sure. Yeah. No, for but sure. They were big, big stars like Joni Mitchell. You know. Yeah. 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 But no. Yeah. Um, I mean, I. I can't imagine anyone, but especially, yeah, no, some of those people really hadn't played, you know, to, I mean, any kind of crowd like that, but I can't, I mean, the, it, it's huge. I mean, you still, like, the, the when you, they show those crowd shots, you're like, that, yeah, yeah. people just, I mean, you know, tear, tore down fences and, the, you know, the hills just keep going and people are just as far back. I can't imagine the people in the back can hear, but they're, or see, but they're, they're there to be part of it. <laughs> it, didn't matter, it didn't matter. You were well. They, well, they were. <laughs> they had their own thing going on, but it also did. You were there, and I, I. How 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 close did you make? You drew. You you had tickets. You were on. But you never. Did you make it out of New York City? Did you make? I mean, Maxis. We 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 was. I remember sitting in the front room in Maxis. I, I didn't know if it was it a week. It must have been over a weekend, right? Right. So I had no idea. Yeah. We started to drive up on the Friday, and I think we were going to go up on the Saturday or the Sunday. And word came back that that the rain and the mud and the traffic was horrendous. I mean. Mm. We the word was you, you won't even get there. If you oh yeah, 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 yeah. In other yeah, words, yeah. it was, it was. So you didn't. So you, uh, for some reason, I thought the story was you were stuck on the side. You never even go. You you just no, knew no, better. You no, because of the right because we heard yeah. it was chaos. And yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We uh, were not. I mean, we. I mean, I was working, so it. It's not as if I could have got up there early and camped out. I mean, I wasn't at right. It wasn't that into it except that it was going to be a great festival and it was not difficult to buy tickets but it turned out to be for those of us who weren't really absolutely desperate it was going to be very difficult to get there yeah i didn't have a car so i was going to have to get a ride for time. yeah but anyway so I, so I missed it so i guess i'm not that generation after all I have no, Sha na na played yeah. Woodstock and killed people. Yeah, no, okay. So here, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. So, well, there's a Bobby Rydell just died this week. Um, oh, he did. Yeah, and I it's, saw Bobby. I went to see him. And it's injured. I did. Well, no, I just. Well, I was okay. So Rydell High. My my frame of reference is Greece because Rydell High in Greece is named after him. That whole era. Just, I just read it really well one, in a, one of the obituaries, and it talks about you know that era, him, Fabian, etc., being displaced by the Beatles, but also sort of finding their own. And it was just interesting. Again, I mean, Sha Na Na played Woodstock. There was still that there was still po that music stayed popular, even if it wasn't you know top of the charts like the Beatles. But it's and no, and, and no, I don't know. Bobby Rydell signed to Frank Sinatra's label, but then they didn't really promote him the way he wanted. But he was still sort of proud to be on the same label as Frank for a while. Like I don't know. It's just his, it was an interesting. Yeah, I I was a fan, and I was yeah. I was a big Bobby Rydell fan of his. He had a song called Sway, I think. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Your mother and I went to see Bobby Rydell. 
I, I've got an idea of looking at being an outdoors, but it wasn't like okay. a concert. Yeah. It was for some event, maybe, mm -hmm. a thing. I don't know. And uh, no, Bobby Rydell and Fabian were definitely like in England, there was um, uh, Cliff Richard and Adam Faith. Sure. They were, they were all displaced by the Beatles. They were yeah. all displaced by the Beatles. But Shannon and Na were, they, they were, Oh, no, they definitely no, they were a novelty band. They were power yes, no, they were not they had a they had something else going for them because they were they had a good set they had the sound. Yes. But they were also they were an act. It, no, yeah, no, it was very it was very um tongue in cheek. Yeah, it was very tongue in cheek and very yeah, no, and, and yeah, it was a it was an act. It was a novel they they yeah, it was even though but again, if they were doing it at Woodstock, they were ahead of everyone else by about a decade as far as oh yes that yes. return to that that you know by it, it, Greece was seventy seven so that's you know that's you know, again almost a decade later that people were rediscovering that and um, yeah they, even they, artists they, like Elton John again at the piano were br bringing it back around to crooning and around to but yeah no. So, because also something else, I don't know whether it's true or not, but um, when I was listening to the Beatle channel and they said the quiz was, which Beatles song did Frank Sinatra say was the best love song that's ever been written? And I thought, how can Frank Sinatra have ever said a Beatles song was the best. Last I want to hold your hand. No, it's not. I want to hold your hand. I don't know. No, no. Oh, something the way you. Oh, I, know. I don't know why. Yes, yeah. And I think he's covered. I think I have it. Yeah, I think he's covered it. Um, it's because it never says I love you. He says because mm. he was a good. He was a great lyricist. I mean, a great singer. So he did. Oh, yeah. No, I love Frank. I yes. Um. I thought that was interesting. George Harrison and Frank Sinatra. Yeah. 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 It's all music, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, no, that's definitely yeah. That's definitely my perspective, but. Yeah. Yeah. So what else in the culture wars? <laughs> um, no, I don't know. What else with you? What have you been watching? What have you been listening? What? Have... I, I don't know. I had a very interesting discussion with a. Uh, the um, artist from Singapore, whose work I have some of, his name is Heyman Chong. And he's, he's in New York for a while. Um, he hasn't been here, obviously, hasn't been able to travel. Um, he doesn't have a major gallery, but he's quite, quite popular. He's not hugely successful financially, but he's a very, very smart guy. He's probably around he's in his 40s maybe he's about your age ish maybe 50 and and he said this his visit to new york has been pretty amazing because he's been here two or three months he said that because he's asian he's invited everywhere and everybody wants to meet him <laughs> Every art event, he said, every art, and he goes, I mean, he's very gregarious. Sure, know? sure, sure. Uh, and he's here to meet curators and people like that. Sure. But he said, every art event now is very, even if it's a small dinner, is yeah. very carefully curated. Yeah. And it cannot be more than 50% white. So he thinks this is hilarious because, I mean, he's just getting, he's just, you know, um, but yeah, and with I know, and again, so I work at a nonprofit. I, I'm now exiting the racial equity team, which I inst personally wrote the recommendation that became the bylaw that the racial equity team be at least seventy five percent people of color. Like if if this is going to be the team that you know, prior to that, it you, yeah, that makes sense. Right. Well, specifically because it's a police. Yeah. Yes. And. Um, as the person who installed that, I still can't know 
whether I am on the team because of my contributions that are important and valuable or because I was invited because I am the right race, you know? And they, like, it's that imposter syndrome that comes along with that. That, And I, I think it's most important that, that people who previously never thought about that, the composition of the event and who they're inviting and who's speaking and who's in attendance in general and, and who's never, I think it's important that people are thinking about that now and it's still just, it, I don't know, as it, it, how do you, how do you, and I'm glad he's enjoying it, but I am, he, I, he's enjoying it, but he also, he's also aware, for instance, he is a, he, he is a close friend who's an American artist, he's known for 20 years, that American artist is now, um, uh, Jordan Wilson is now very, very successful. He's very mm -hmm. good. Like he does very bizarre things with robots. They're very scary. He's very disturbing. Jordan Wilson about his age. And he said, Wilson is, is really, really afraid because of his early history on Instagram with pictures of him and girlfriends. And this is going to do with race. This has to do with, 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 uh, male you know if i could do with gender equity yeah he's he's scrubbed his facebook and he's he's scared of being canceled because of um you know something emerging from his student day and this this really i i, I was quite amazed at this but I, okay i'm missing what there's a, a white artist very successful right been in the public eye for 15 years and, wait, and wait, does, is, is he here's well here's the part that i'm missing or not missing is he legitimate okay is he afraid of legitimate criticism is he legitimately afraid of non-legitimate criticism is he afraid of being canceled by people who don't understand or is it just sort of preemptive and he's not sure what he's afraid of but he's scrubbing everything because i i'm sort of hearing all three i think he's afraid principally that somebody that 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 he had consensual relationships with, or many people, oh. one of them, because of where he is now, is going to can 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 get him canceled. I mean, can basically come come uh, can yeah can. But but again. Because he did something that I mean, I don't know. No, 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 not. I, I don't believe it's because he did something, but, but because of his, 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 um, his, his, his level of success. Persona, his, 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 um, uh, Facebook presentation of himself. As a, as a younger man. More just as, are you talking about just more as, as tone or like, I mean. It's, it's yeah. What? <sighs> yeah. I mean, I, Heyman, Heyman told me that it, that, that he, and he travels a lot and he says, now he's married, you know, um, uh, he said, he said he is never, he is never alone with a younger unmarried artist or student. Okay. But again, I'm well, no, I, I, both this okay this is this is mike pence no this is mike pence and i and i, I i'm not i i'm both being critical this is unfair this is this is self-preservation at the expense of so if a young woman wanted him as a mentor she couldn't she couldn't have him as a mentor because because of his fear um no, she could she could he, they'd have to be. You can mentor someone and not ever be alone with them and not ever have a private oh, conversation uh, you, in a legitimate you, way, in the same way that you would a, a mentor, a true like a busy. You are, you know what a mentor is. Come on. I, I think you. I think you would have um, uh, an agreement. You would have a. You would have an agreement. This is. I'm sorry. Uh, well, this is an interesting conversation. This is victim blaming to me. Now we need an agreement to protect men from women. What they no, no, accuse them of. No. no okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. That's not what you're saying. Or me. Yeah. I think. It, well. 
I, I think it works both ways. It's yeah. very nuanced. No, no, no. I get it. I get. I get it. And this is the real world. Um, I. It be, because because the the mentee, if the whether they're female or male or whatever, doesn't matter. sure. The, the 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 mentee has to feel secure and safe. Right. But here, no, when, here's my thing, and this is because they, the first I had ever heard of this, and this is actually, it's a whole movement, and it's it's actually pretty, it's within the right wing and conservative. Mike Pence, this goes back to like 2016 when he first became yeah. the vice president, saying, I, I'll never be alone with a woman, blah, 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 and his reasons, and his marriage, and his faith, and I'm not, but, um, again, when men in power say, I place limits on how I will relate to women. That is an abuse of power, in my opinion. Um, Let me think that. Let me think. Mm -hmm. And victim blaming to a certain extent, or not even victim blaming. It's it's pr preemptive victim blaming. It's it's it. Yeah. So, but yeah i don't know but again it is complex and how i mean again uh yeah i supervise people i have my business has an hr department i have to be careful about what i say i mean you know i think about all these things as well i am i am non-binary but masculine presenting i supervise mostly females there is a dynamic there i supervise some males there could be a dynamic there i don't know it's i you know i have to think about all these things um so it's yeah, not. It, it, I have. I must say that. Um, I mean, we have. We have. We we have, young interns at work. I mentor them. They're mostly female. Right. My doors never closed. We walk around. I mean, it's, it's a very. It's a safe and healthy environment. I think you know, and I think they do too. Right. Um, uh, because there is, there's no vibe. There's no vibe. I don't, I don't believe there's any vibe in the building because, uh, um, I don't think any of the males, the uh, sure. predator. Sure. No, of course. But of course you never know that. And, but you, can, you can never know that. And you can never assume that either. And that's an unfortunate thing in our society still. That is true. I, I sense that I'm, I'm, I'm considered to be um, old and safe, if you know. <laughs> I, 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 no, no, I'm laughing, but I also, I actually, I mean, even though I don't know how I vibe right now at this moment with my hair, but comparative to the people I supervise, all of whom are, one of whom actually said to me, I think you're about the same age as my mom. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's actually true. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. In fact, I'm older than her mom. Um, yeah, no, to them, I'm old and safe, and that's great. I actually, I'm glad to have graduated I, into... That, that's why I'm actually, I, I, I'm kind of, I'm fascinated by this conversation I'm having with you and I had with him, because because it, it's a, it is a new perspective for me. I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not identifying with it. I'm, right. I'm, I'm looking at the... I'm looking at the cultural shift. Can I can I push it a little bit farther? And again, the opinions I express are only one, but especially the industry I'm in. And so I was, and again, with gender particularly, I was mostly identified as male for most of the time I was in the classroom. And most of the time I was a toddler teacher. So that, mean, that involves changing diapers. That involves, um, you know, this whole conversation right now around grooming and this this whole especially right wing that you know for instance not even not even accusing the liberals or the far left or even democrats marjorie taylor green accused three set republican senators who voted to uh in favor of uh ketanji brown jackson's uh confirmation pro-pedophile like, like literally no nuance anymore. There's no nuance anymore to our arguments. But I, you know, I lived with this. I actually was very fortunate that I personally never experienced, or I shouldn't say never, but rarely experienced it. But I actually saw examples of male coworkers. Well, is he alone with them or blah, blah, blah. And actually 
in child care because of the ratios it's not possible to never be alone with a child it's not possible to because the other teacher has to stay in ratio with the other children you have to take that one child to a bathroom but now that we live in a really you know and again i i get the preemptive fear the preemptive because we i don't know what male teachers are doing in the classroom right now to protect themselves but things like making sure they are keeping doors open or never you know ne you know um just to avoid the accusation because that can end a career because that can and now we live in a, a society where that's just being tossed around very 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 casually which as you know i am a a child abuse survivor it's so cynical, and especially how it's being used specifically to target p gay people and 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 the that community. Um, it, 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 it's a witch. It is like a Salem witch. And, and it's yes, and it's a playbook. It's 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 not new. It's this is if you can associate the LGBTQIA plus community with. Uh, pedophilia, bestiality, um, necrophilia, you know, any of the worst impulses, then you can, you, yeah, you smear them with that. And that's not a new playbook at all. Um, yeah. <laughs> I could definitely get on my soapbox about that. Well, I, that, I guess. Uh, it, I, it, 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 this is not something that's on the fringes of, uh, of the society. It's been front and center of a, of a televised uh, a hearing, of, of, of which which I think which I think puts the McCarthy hearings in into into the wing. I mean, I think it. I think that I hope future generations are going to be oh. beyond horrified at, at, at these politicians. I mean, really, it. it, it I mean, yeah. I, I I was well. I mean, again, it, we live in such a society now that it's about playing to your base. It's not even the most horrifying about it, all of this, but like just the politicians who openly acknowledge, yes, I think she's qualified, but I'm going to vote no to punish the libs or as payback for how they treated Kavanaugh, which, again, they didn't even complete the investigation. We now know the FBI didn't even complete the investigation. They just, we didn't, yeah. We, we tried to get something investigated unsuccessfully, and it, what is actually still to this day probably a legitimate, like, sexual assault just got swept under a rug, and he got confirmed anyway. Um, that's what we did to them. But the fact that they would say... It's not even about her. The fact that we live in a part of time where you could just say openly, I'm just going to do it just to be, just because I can, like, that. that's acceptable. Like, I I don't know. Yeah, we live in a bizarre world. Like, we live in, but, again, you're only playing to your base now. It doesn't matter what someone else thinks. It doesn't matter what makes sense. Just if, if the people who will reelect you believe what you say, if they, they like how you say it, they don't have to believe it. They don't have to. Not about belief. Uh. <laughs> well, we have to work hard for the twenty twenty two. I mean, what what can we, I mean? I you know, um, yeah. I mean, I think yes. These midterms, I think. Um, if the Dems lose Congress. I mean. It, which I mean, everyone's I mean, everyone's already preparing for that. Which is, uh, but I mean, I get it. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, <laughs> this. Okay, so jobs are you know an all time. First of all, we were in a pandemic two years ago. Jobs are down. The stock market is up. The stock market, which the whole time Trump was in office, they wanted us to acknowledge the stock market, not the economy. Now that the stock market's actually up and rallying. We're going to ignore that. Yes, there is inflation, and that is real, and that's really felt. But the president doesn't control that. The president doesn't control supply and demand, uh, supply chain. The president doesn't control gas prices. The Keyline pipes, the key, the Keystone pipeline, isn't even about. It's it's about Canadian. It's about exporting. It's it's not about bringing more gas. It wouldn't result in lower gas prices. But like. All their, their arguments don't even need to make sense. There are they just need to make them and like angrily over and over and over. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> well, 
<laughs> still happy with oh, oh. Happy G. Happy no, this is it. This is a truck. This is it. Still happy with that? No, that's great. And I've taken the dogs out on some, you know, some adventures, and where it's 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 good to have a vehicle that runs again. Even yeah. Um, my job is definitely moving more in that direction. It's become more. I mean, as is much of the world, um, and so. I am, yeah, I'm glad to have that. Um, everyone's kind of like roasting me. Like, I guess I don't seem like a pickup truck person. I'm like, it's not even my first pickup. Though, my last pickup, literally, my ex wife drove off in because I felt that that was the most appropriate. That was like a country song. But, um, and it, it was the. What? That is a country song. Yeah. I mean, she picked it out, and it was more her vehicle. I don't. I, I only remember driving it a couple of times, but um, <laughs> but tech, but my name was on it. I this is not my first. Yeah, no, this is not my first pickup truck. But I, uh, no, I really love it. I. Um, you could put that on the back. This is not a. <laughs> that, thank you. I do. I need to make like. Yeah, I need to. I, it needs. I need. It needs to be branded. Um, but um, yeah, no, that's good. Um, I officially submitted my paperwork for to have my uh, drive. I'm sorry, my driver's license already identifies me as non-binary. To have my birth certificate in New York, which I now you can now have your you can now have X as your designation on your birth certificate, which my birth certificate has now <laughs> like has gone through numerous. Um, both with my name change and then my divorce and whatnot, but um, yeah, I will I, I will be officially be I guess non-binary in the state of New York as well as Washington, which is okay. yeah. Um, Those two states. Say again. Those two states. Well, your residency in your place of birth, right? Well, yeah, well, yeah, well, it, uh, well, it will be. I don't know what my I don't remember what my if it was an option for social security but basically all my documents will line up which I didn't think I didn't know that birth certificate in New York was an option it's now it's now an option on in 25 states though having just insured my car I found out um, well, I'll give a shout out to Metro Mile. They're a company that lets you identify as non-binary. The insurance industry is still very, because, <laughs> do your dogs need to go for a walk? Are they? They will a little bit. They will, yeah. Um, because, well, here's the interesting thing that I found out looking into this. Female drivers are safer. This has always been known. Yet they pay more for insurance for whatever you know. That of course that didn't shock anyone. Um, in any event, very few will let you identify as non-binary, even in states where your driver's license identi. I'm like, but my driver's license doesn't say male or female. So what am I literally? I, you you advertise to me. I'm signing onto your website. I have no legal way to follow without lying. I can't. I mean, if I say male or female, that's not true because my driver's license doesn't identify me that way. Uh, if I say female, uh, yeah, in any event, that was interesting to me. Um, that you, that that yeah, even though there are 25 states where your driver's license can identify you as non-binary, there are very few states where you can be insured that way. But I did find a company that did. So. Um, that was I guess it's because they're late. That since they don't want to change their, um, you know, their actuarial tables. Well, I yeah, I actually read an article by a company that was interesting. This is the Zebra, and I'm not. This is not uh, a an endorsement because they were one of the companies that don't offer it. But interestingly, some states require you to, including Montana, which I'm like, oh wow, Montana is more progressive than Washington. So even though you get yeah, in Washington. You can your driver's license can say non-binary. You would have to the, the legislature would have to take an extra step to require insurance companies to acknowledge it. And yeah, insurance companies are basically like we won't until they legally require us to. And even then, only in the states where they legally require us to. And exactly like you said, because of the actual aerial tables. There's actually there's no there's no. Well, there's, there is, they said there's no data on non-binary people, but I know at least in Washington, it's three years that they've, it's been since 2017. Oh, I'm sorry. Be, there will be 
They just they haven't bothered to do it. They haven't bothered to crunch the numbers. They could. Because it'll be expensive. They have to do research. They can do that. And they do it in the states they're required to. Exactly. So, yeah, they have to do research. They just won't be bothered until they're legally compelled to. So I was like, I appreciate your article because this is the only article on the internet I can find that even explains this. But I'm still... But, yeah, that's... <laughs> right. Uh... All right. I yeah. I don't know. I think that's all I got. I yeah. That's uh, great. That's a lot. I got a lot. It's hey. been a, yeah. I love you, Dad. I miss you. I miss you. I love you. Have a great week, son. You too. Saturday. Yeah. Next Saturday. Saturday feels. I think Saturday should be good for me. Okay. All right. Okay. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye, Agnes and Edith. <laughs>